Today we're going to look at a simple keyframe animation using Caden Live. So um, what we plan to do is to take two simple images, um, a background and a foreground, and we're going to move the foreground over the background um, using the Caden Live tools. So these two images are just simple images prepared using GIMP. I've got a JPEG here and I've got a GIMP raw format XCF file here. So this background is, as you can see, just a little bit of text with uh, Tuxa Penguin here. And then the foreground, if I double click on it and open it up, is just a simple image of a magnifying glass. Okay, so um, first thing I need to do in GIMP here is I need to save it off as a format that Caden Live will be able to render. Um, Caden Live is able to read XCF files, but when you come to render the final MP4 file, it is not going to be able to convert it successfully into the image. So what I'm going to do is just save this off as a copy. I'm going to call it uh, foreground.jpg, I think. Um, you can use other formats such as PNG um, and other sort of standard image formats. So let's pull up Caden Live. I've already got it running here. So what I'm going to do first of all is import the, the two clips we had, the foreground and the background, and I do that by clicking on this icon here and clip. Uh, I navigate to my images which sit down under my pictures directory and I'm going to pull in the two JPEGs there. Okay, so here we see our two image files. So first of all I'm going to do is to take this background image and drag it to track 2, my video track 2 and obviously I can pull this out to any length that I want okay one of the good things about uh, Caden Live is it allows you to bring in a static image and then to resize it to whatever length of video you want if you want to be more precise about the length and duration of the video clip you can actually double click it and you can change the uh, duration down here. So we want it down at uh, 20 odd seconds. Click OK and it'll size it for us automatically. Likewise, we can just drag in the foreground clip, put that above the background on video track 1. Again, we can pull it out to be the same length as the background because the animation will consist of both frames. Um, and if we were just to click down here in the timeline, you can see, even if we actually run this video, it's not very interesting. All you can see is the foreground frame. You can't see any of the background. Uh, and that's because uh, by default, Caden Live will expect these frames to be opaque. So what I'm going to do is click down in this bottom right-hand corner of the foreground clip. Okay, and that will create a transition. Um, normally a little bit small there to see but I can drag that out to be the whole length okay so this has created a transition between these two tracks here by default it will be a dissolve um, transition but if I click over in this window here I can change it to composite and I'll also change the track just to be a little bit more specific you can leave it as auto if you want but I am going to have this to say that this uh, transition is a composite between video track 1 and video track 2. That's all we need to do at this stage, so we've created the um, transition between the two, but yeah, when we look back in here, nothing's changed. Okay, so We still can't see through the top layer into the bottom layer. JPEG can't handle the transparency, so it's put it in as a white, uh, and um, Caden Live is seeing that as a uh, as a blank white on here so we need to get rid of that so what we need to do is to just to swap back to GIMP here and the simplest way to do it is to click on the background layer here uh, and pick up a, um, a color that's not used in the background image so let's go back here and just double check what we've got here we've got some blues we've got some greys yellow and uh, black a little bit of white um, as well. So first of all I'm going to do a control A to select everything in the layer then I'm going to click on this color swatch and take 
um, just full red FF0000. Okay, then I'm going to click the fill tool and then I'm just going to click in the background and fill it all with red. Okay, and then I'm going to save this finally back as the JPEG file. Okay, so. And then hopefully Caden Live picks up in real time your changes. So you can see here that it's picked up the redness, but now all we see is red. This is where the uh, so called blue screen effect comes in. So if I click down here on the effect list tab under alpha manipulation, there is an effect called blue screen. If you click to drag that down and dump it on the foreground layer. Okay, so we can immediately see that it's made a difference, but it's not perhaps the difference that we wanted because um, we can see some of the background slides showing through here, but it's only in the area of the magnifying glass image itself and not the background. So it's almost a reverse of what we want. So um, what we need to do here is click back on the uh, foreground clip. We can see here's the blue screen effect. And there's this area in the middle which is squeezed a little bit between the effects and the preview window. We can just drag this out to resize it. We can see here there's an option color key. At the moment that's set to a blue value here. So what that's doing is it's taking a blue value as the transparency. And it's obviously uh, the uh, silver of the frame has got a little bit of blue in it, which is what it is taking as being transparency. So we need to change this to be the red color that we put on the background. The quickest way to do it is to click on the pipette icon here, and then to click on the color that you want for the background in the preview window, in case here. So that looks much better now. So we can actually see the our foreground image, the magnifying glass, and we can also see our background slide here. So that's all very well, but if we click about in the timeline here, all we've got really is a compound image of those two slides. So we could have just created something like that in GIMP. So what we need to do is to put some actual motion into this to actually animate it. And the easiest way to do that is to click down on the transition here at the bottom of the video one track. What that'll do is it'll open up this area in the center of the screen here, which allows you to change various attributes of the transition. So at the moment, you can see there are certain values down here, such as an X and a Y and a W for width and a H for height. And those values allow you to change the position and the size of the image. So at the moment, these are read only, so we can't change them. And that is because we can only alter these values at a defined keyframe. So keyframes are the mechanism by which we can actually set a number of values at a particular point in the timeline. So as we can see here by this little uh, inverted triangle here, and this is showing us the um, position in the timeline that we are at the moment. So we're over here and it's synchronized to the cursor down here in the actual timeline Caden Live. So if I click across here you can see the arrow or the triangle moves as I do so. So um, I can either click and pull this back to the start um, or I can use these two icons here which um, tab for back to the last keyframe or forward to the next keyframe. So at the moment, the only keyframe we've got is the start position, so that's fine. We can actually uh, assign a given start position for this image here. So say we want this to start a little bit further over to the left. I can either click in here and input a numerical um, coordinate for it. So you can put in minus value, so if I want to move it to left, I'm going to change that from 0 to minus 100. And I can just hit enter, and you can see that the magnifying glass has moved across. Um, alternatively, what I can do is I can click in the preview window and actually just drag the image uh, to where I want it. That's fine, so I want it to start in that position there. Um, and then, say, at some point in the animation, say here, I want the uh, magnifying glass to have moved to over here, say perhaps to center on Tux's head here. So again, if I want to do it at this 
particular point. You can see that these values are read only, so it's not going to allow me to do that at this point um, until I insert keyframe. So to do that, I click on this icon here with the plus sign in. So I click on that. You can see it adds this little diamond icon to show there's another uh, keyframe here. And uh, these boxes um, uh, stop being read only and allow me to enter a value in. This time I'm going to pick up the uh, magnifying glass and just drag it, I think. Might be a little bit easier to uh, place over Tux's head. There you go, that's fine. That's where I want the magnifying glass to end up. And let's say for a final piece of motion, I actually want the magnifying glass to go down and maybe center over this uh, text here, the bug. Uh, I'm going to put that right at the end so I can use the uh, icon here to go to the next keyframe. Of course, it isn't one, so it'll go to the end of the, of the actual sequence. Again, I click the Add keyframe, and then I can drag the magnifying glass down to the position I want. So what we'll, what we'll see if we go right way back to the beginning, we'll see that the magnifying glass starts off there. It should move across to Tux's head at this point in the timeline, and then it should go retract back down towards the bottom of the screen to center over this bug. So we'll uh, see the uh, motion of the magnifying glass going across and then down. Um, good thing about Caden Live is that we can either go right way back to the beginning and we can use the arrow key to um, go through the sequence frame by frame. So I can use, for example, the right arrow key to go forward. So we can see it going forward. Or I can use the left arrow key to go backwards in the sequence. Like that. Um, alternatively, I can just click on this play icon in the preview window to actually just view it real time. Or as re real time as the uh, preview gets anyway. So it goes over to Tux's head and then you'll see it moves down over the text at the bottom. Excellent, and that's our first piece of animation. Um, let's just say before we leave this that we actually want the magnifying glass to pause on Tux's head for a period of time. So at this point, if we go back here in the timeline, um, we actually want it to pause there for, say, a couple of seconds. So I'm going to click down here in the timeline. You can see that uh, normally the magnifying glass will have moved given the coordinates we gave it before. So what I'm going to do here is to create a new keyframe. And you can create as many keyframes as you like in these pieces, uh, depending on how complex the motion is that you want to define. Um, so we can see that these values are slightly different to the previous keyframes, so we just need to make a note of this. So 780 and minus 87. So I'm going to click across. So I'm going to put 780 and minus 87. Okay, so if we just click between these two keyframes now, we can see there is no change in position. So if we run it back again from the beginning, we can see now that magnifying glass goes over tux. It pauses until we get to this keyframe, and then it starts to move down to the bottom to the last keyframe there. And that's all there is to animation using keyframes in Caden Live. And all that remains to be done is for you to click on the render button and render the file into the format of choice.